All right, man. Welcome back to Agree to Disagree. If you're new, welcome to Agree to Disagree. I'm my boy, Jay Lloyd. Greg Williams. He uh, pops. And we got BG. All right. Before we get into it, let's shout out these players of the week, man. In the Western Conference, we got Steph Curry. Um, silence a lot of the critics, uh, including Damian Lillard, CJ McCollum. Uh, that was big time, man. I'm not going to get too much into that because we just had a segment on it. But, uh, yeah, what a work, Steph. And then in the Eastern Conference, surprisingly, uh, we had Tobias Harris. All right. Um, haven't heard too much about him, but I, I guess he was killing Jai Harris. All right. I want to talk to you all about these Brooklyn Nets, man. Um, obviously, they got um, a lot of the same players from last year, but they do have two – Big, big pieces in terms of um, um, shot attempts and egos and, you know, Kyrie and KD kind of make an impact when they get on the court, um, let alone on the court together for the first time. So um, I'm going to start with you, Jay. Um, does their slow start, does that concern you? Is it a voice of concern or is it just something that they got to kind of get in rhythm with? Um, before you go, I can tell, like, down the stretch, um, both of them kind of want to be that dude, you know what I'm saying, rather than kind of, you know, running some O, like moving the ball around a little bit, trusting the other guys. Um, I see at the end of games, I see a lot of jacking of the shot by those two, mainly Kyrie. But um, I'm going to let you touch up on that. Tell me what you think. Yeah, man, I I, you, I couldn't agree with you more. I got a chance to watch a couple of their, their games. I did watch the, the whole Wizard game, um, watch the Hawks. So I, I've watched them a little bit this year. And um, the one thing that I can say for them that does concern me, again, is their late game execution. Um, but I think that's also Steve Nash, too. I was watching the, the Wizard game. And it was during the timeout, and Kyrie, and now this is NBA, this is normal, but Kyrie was talking to Jeff Green the whole time while Steve Nash was trying to, like, diagram a play. Now, again, this the NBA, you know, the, the coaches will go talk amongst themselves. They'll come in the timeout late, you know, like we know all that. But I just feel like, you just see at times that I don't know if it's Steve Nash so far running things or if it's when the games get close, Kyrie and Kevin. And at the end of the day, they're just really coming down the court, throwing the ball to each other, and, and the teams are just overloading one side. Um, Kevin Durant had a great look at the game, the great look against uh, the Wizards, though. He should have made that. But um, I thought the game shouldn't even got there. The Wizards haven't been playing well, and the Nets just – they're going to concern me, I guess, I guess when playoff time comes, we're a ways away from that, ways away. But I think Steve Nash is going to have to, you know, find his way. And then lastly, man, I don't know if he has the assistance. He doesn't have any, like, dominant assistance either. Deanne Tony has been known to be very passive. You have Jock Vaughn, who hasn't been a head coach yet. So who do those guys as a coaching staff really respect? where if the game is close, <laughs> they can kind of sit back a little bit. So, yeah, man, I, I think it's early, but I still feel like there's some concerns. Yeah, and to your point, I, I see little things too. I, I've probably seen every game of the next except for one. Um, Kyrie, um, it's KD cool, man. I could see during time. I could see during the timeouts. Kyrie's kind of distancing himself away from everybody else. Like it was like a close game between the Hawks, and um, it was a timeout. I think it was like a minute left. Um, I think um, the Nets were up one, and they caught the timeout to draw something up. And Kyrie goes and sit on like the side, like the side where like here's the bench, and then on this side is the like kind of like where the camera people would be. It's like a little thing counter where you can sit on. He sits over there and the rest of the team sitting on the bench while they're drawing the plays, man. And one more thing before I let you go, Craig. Um, I, 
I, I, I wonder if y'all see this. KD, like, gets up in the middle of the game and, like, walks along the sideline and just kind of talks to Kyrie. Have you guys ever seen that? Have you seen him do that? Yeah, like, that he'll, he'll get up during, like, the middle of the game, like, during a free throw, go over and talk to, like, Kyrie. I'm like, man, sit down. Yeah, y'all ain't seen that? Man, look that up. That... Go ahead, Craig, because you kind of voiced that this was going <laughs> <laughs> so, go ahead. Yeah, <clears throat> I, I said early on that this was going to be really good or really bad. And I kind of, if I had a gamble on it, I would say it turned out really bad, especially when they hire Steve Nash and they're talking about we're going to be player coaches and we're going to be equals. When it comes down to the crunch time in the playoffs, we need a coach that the, that the guys respect when he said we're going to run this play. When you got too many, you know, you have a three-headed monster, there's going to be no real leadership and no real direction. It is kind of early. I think that uh, John was right. I think Durant is cool because he was able to learn how to play when he went to Golden State. So he learned how to take the shots when he was hot and when to, you know, when to step up and when to, when to back off. So I, I don't think he's the issue. But Kyrie, we can tell he already, always wanted to be the man, even when he played with LeBron, you know. So it's still early. I mean, just like when, you know, they put the team together, when, you know, LeBron went to Miami and played with uh, Dwayne Wade, it, it takes time. So I, I would give him more time, but I'm looking at the Eastern Conference and it's pretty competitive. And I just read two before the show. It looks like what Durant's going to be sitting out for COVID reasons. So days. like you don't have time. He's going to miss a minimum of four games with the East being so competitive right now. You don't have time to, to not, you know, win the game you should win. And I, looking at their schedule, it wasn't like Golden State where they're getting blown out. It looks like they're pretty competitive. I think the most they lost by was like eight. So I think that they're, pretty they're in good shape so they're not too bad but i think once they start winning they'll learn how to win and learn how to play with each other and kind of get keep egos in check mm. I, I agree and you would you would think Kyrie will be like in terms of a leadership role or even just facilitating and not trying to be the man all the time um playing with lebron that he would kind of take a back seat but it's, it seemed like it's gotten worse. So uh, I'm going to go with you, BG. What you got for us? Uh, I'm, I'm with Craig on this one, man. I think it's way too early. Um, he brought up the heat, <clears throat> excuse me, when LeBron was there. I think the same stuff was said about Spolstra. Uh, Spolstra, everybody was questioning him. Everybody didn't know who he really was. Um, I, I think they'll be fine. I've seen a few of their games and I get what you're saying, John, that, you know, obviously they start jacking shots up there at the end, but I just feel like they've, they've made a lot of right plays that kind of get, you know, nobody really sees just because, you know, at the end of the game, they missed a couple shots. Everybody's on them, which were both makeable shots that they should have made, but they did not um, But I, I just think it's entirely too early, man. I think they're going to be fine at the end of the games. Anyways, in the playoffs, you go to your guys regardless I feel like in any game you go to your guys at the end of the game and it's mostly pick and roll unless you, you know, you have a specific play you want to run with different options. But at the end of the day, you basically go pick and roll or you pick on somebody that you feel like can't guard the per the best player. So I think they'll be fine. Uh, it's still too early to tell. Obviously Durant not being out for a little bit here is going to impact them a little bit, but I think they'll be fine. I, I get the antics on the court. I've never liked that. Like John said about him walking around, but I mean, that's just how the game's starting to be. So I think they'll be good. Yeah, you say it's too early. Uh, where do you, where do you have them finishing this year? For me or Brian? Uh, Brian, my bad. Okay, yeah. So, uh, what was that, John? Where do you have them finishing this year? Yeah, I agree with you, BG. So um, we're, um, we'll move on to Pops. Pops, what you think of all this, man? What you make of it? Well, man, let me drop this knowledge on y'all, man. Listen, man, here's the thing. Here's me drop this popology on y'all. The, the problem is, here's where for this to work, and I know everybody want to do this 1A, 1B, and all this. One of them dudes going to have to take a back seat. 
is no different than when, like we said, when LeBron went to Miami. When D Wade saw what how it was going to react, how it was going, D Wade said, "Okay, I'm gonna take a back seat. I'm just gonna be the beat. One of these dudes got to be prideful enough to say, "I'm gonna be the one beat." With the one B truly is Kyrie. He may not believe that, <laughs> but the one A is KD. Um, and then you got to realize, you got to figure out when it really gets tough and it gets rough, who is the leader on this team? Who is here again? Who is the one guy that can galvanize the truth as one? And we know it can happen because we saw how dominant it was with Jimmy Butler. But who's that one guy between KD and Kyrie uh, that, that, I mean, to me, and John, you made a good point. It seemed like they trying to make it too buddy-buddy. Like you said, KD getting up, walking out. Come on, man. If you you would feel or you would pop <laughs> or Jerry or Lake J. ain't doing that, man. Pat Riley, you're not doing that. You ain't walking away from the huddle. And I'm drawing up a play. See, and, and that's where it's going to get. And then when you get the young guys, like uh, Den Riddle, who, uh, who tore his ACL, but that's, that was huge for them. And then you yeah. get the rookies, and they see this stuff, man. And you're supposed to be kind of teaching them. And then y'all, they see how y'all, what y'all doing. I mean, they ain't dumb, man. They know if I hope they sitting there probably going, and man, we could get traded any minute because, you know, and then D'Antoni is soft. Steve Nash is, you know, we don't know what kind of persona he got. And then, like you said earlier, then Craig said, all this, we going to coach by uh, each other. We all going to coach each other. Well, you ain't going to win. You, y'all can try to do that family coaching if you want to. <laughs> well, when it comes to adjustments, which one of y'all going to make them? <laughs> you know, so... I just think it's early. It's early, but it's not early because a lot of people got an eye on them. And a lot of people are watching it. And that East, uh, if you look at that East, man, it it it, 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 it it's gonna be brutal. I mean, because there's a lot of cats ain't, ain't clicked in yet. And it, 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 it's gonna be what we said. It's gonna be a problem. It's gonna be up and down. It's gonna be up and down. Yeah. And uh I, I agree with uh BG and Craig. It's early. But it's it's still concerning to me because um, one the chemistry is not there and two um, from the games I saw it's the lack of respect for the head coach man like, it's just some things you don't do um, I think Pops brought it up like if that's if you own Pat Riley's bench or Greg Popovich's bench like you're not doing none of that man Katie you wasn't getting up going to the the sub. Um, sub box talking to Kyrie then when you're playing for Kerr like what, what's changed now you know what I'm saying and yeah man I, I think it I think it starts with Kyrie though man because it seems like he has the biggest ego and personality on the team and yeah. it's just tough because someone with his skill set um he can easily be the one a if he passed the ball you know what I'm saying like if he added that to his game where he's looking for others before he's looking for himself. He would be really, really, really good, man. But um, that's just, that's just Kyrie though. Uh, I remember, I'm not comparing, not comparing. I remember how cold was. Man. That was cold. Cold, cold was about his buckets and nobody else. So I see a lot of that in Kyrie too. He's, he's just trying to, I don't know, establish yourself. It's tough too. You play with LeBron James and now you're playing with KD. Like obviously on both teams you one B, so I think on this time this team he's trying to prove he's a one A. I don't, I don't know what's Kyrie, but um, I kind of want to switch gears a little bit too, staying on topic. Um, Craig, I want to ask you about the team, man. Um, let me know if it's a fluke or if um, this is something that could continue. All right, uh, I want to ask you about the Phoenix Suns. All right. Um, I think they they only have two losses right now. Uh, they just lost to the Clippers last night, mm. but um, it just seems even though Chris Paul isn't playing that many minutes, his impact is just I don't know what he does, but he's he's definitely making an impact. So, 
uh, yeah, let me know what you see from them, man. I, I called this when they made that signing that that was going to be huge for them. And we already know how cold my man Booker is, you know what I mean? Oh. And uh, this is a great <clears throat> uh, gear to shift after we talked about the Nets because, you, like you said, the leadership gives you that much more momentum, Gives you it helps build chemistry quicker. I just think that, you know, like I said last year, man, I think the NBA came a long way with the moves that were made. I'm just happy that the talent is well spread out. And I, I'm happy to see a team like the Suns really competing in the West, man. It's, it's not a fluke. You know, as, as long as guys stay healthy on that team, I see them, you know, finishing in top four for sure in the West. I agree with you. Um, uh, Jay, I got one for you. Um, this was supposed to be uh, um, up and coming team. Obviously, man, I understand that it's early. I'm just saying based on right now, um, is this, is their start a fluke or is it going to continue? Um, I'm a little worried about the Mavericks right now, man. Um, Luka's getting off to a slow start um, besides the Clippers when he told them up. But I think they're two and four right now. Um, it's just, it's just, just a slow start for them. How much of that is it being a slow start and how much is it is that Porzingis is not in right now? I think Porzingis plays a huge part. I did my research. You know, right now, they're allowing 73% um, of, of baskets in the restricted area right now. So that's probably, if not the worst in the NBA, that's the second worst. That means teams are getting into the paint, getting into the rim, and there's no rim protection. Now, when they have Porzingis there, Porzingis isn't known for his defense, but by him being 7-3, I feel like it at least detour a lot of these guards or kind of push their their, their, their their straight line drives a little bit. They have nobody. They don't even really know who they want to start at that five slot right now. Who's there so right I now? Think, Is it Cal Willie? Willie Collin? W Willie Collin, and then it's something like they do pow. They've been oh, kind okay. of alternating, right? Um, so I, I would put a lot of it on Porzingis. I mean, even in that Clipper series, we didn't really get a chance to see them because Porzingis got hurt that series and he's hurt now. So I, I feel like we got to be able to really see that group with Porzingis. Um, I do like uh, Josh Richardson. I like their pickups. They, I think they need a, more of an athletic wing. Um, Seth did great for them, but they need someone that guard the LeBron Jameses and, and things like that or try to guard. So I like their pickups, but I think – once they get everybody together, I still feel like they're going to be a top four team in the West as well. Uh, I, I don't know his first name, but did you see they picked up uh, Johnson? Uh, James Johnson. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Why do you think they yeah. picked them up? Toughness. Toughness. <laughs> Anybody know? I don't know if y'all know James Johnson, bro. Like <laughs> he's like he's like a black belt. All his all his siblings are black belts. Uh, you saw, I don't know if y'all saw what he did with the twin boys from uh, Charlotte. I don't know if y'all saw that where he got to one of the, he got to one of the twins, and the other twin came up, and he wasn't worried about none of that. So he <laughs> just brings a natural toughness. Like like I'll go guard whoever, um, I'll play against whoever, and I'm gonna compete for those ten to fifteen minutes while I'm out there. They needed that for sure. Is that is that kind of like the the Ron Artez for Cole? Like you know, like that. It, you know, they bodyguard. You know what I'm saying? Kind of like how the Clippers were kind of getting that Luca a little bit. James Johnson's kind of there to kind of you know simmer all that down for sure. Yeah, I think every team back in the day, I know Craig and Pop's gonna allude to it. Used to have enforcers, so you <laughs> would basically get a dude on your roster that his job was to foul. Rub people up or defend the best players. Like yep. every every good team back in the day had one. And because the NBA's changed a lot in terms of fouls and and the physicality has changed, I don't think teams look for that as much. But I think they just need a little bit more toughness on that team. They have but they had a bunch of skilled guys, and Rick Carlisle does a good job of spacing guys out. But you still need a little toughness in the playoffs too. For sure. All right, next one's for you, BG. Um, obviously, you had them uh, winning it all last year. Um, they're getting off to a uh, yeah, a little slow start. Um, 
coming off having the MVP, of course. I think they're four and three. I think they won today. Giannis had 30 in the first half. So I'm pretty sure they won today against Detroit. Um, what are you seeing from um, from Milwaukee? And what do you think are some of those tendencies on why they're getting off to a slow start of four and three? We'll say they're four and three because I'm assuming they won today. Yeah, I mean, it's like I said, we, we've talked about it. I don't want to harp on it too much, but it, obviously it is early on. But uh, I, I think, I mean, obviously how Giannis goes is how they go. And obviously them, I think who they get blown out by. Um, it was some, I forget I forget what the team was, um, but it wasn't a team that they're supposed to get blown out by. But I think. Oh, it was it, the Knicks. Was it the like, Knicks? It was the Knicks. Yeah. I think so. And, uh, and, I, and Jared, Jared brought up this point a while ago. I think it was last year. It's like they're during the regular season, they'll be okay. But if they're not really hitting shots on the outside, everybody knows the blueprint. Everybody knows the blueprint of how to guard Giannis now, right? So he's going to have to somehow develop that jumper. He's going to have to be consistently – not not well, I guess consistently, but he's going to have to be able to knock that down. If we can't knock that down, that team is – it sucks to say. I thought they would make it last year, but they're not going to be able to do it because it's – you just pack the paint. I mean, we've done it as coaches when we play against teams that, you know, that, that, that we know is just one guy dominant and can do everything. We pack the paint and let somebody else beat us type thing. So um, I, I think they'll be okay, though. Um, I think I, I'm a little surprised they didn't come out as hot as I thought they would, especially after getting blown out. But I, I'm sure as Jared knows, he's told me this a long time and pops, you know, Craig, you know, as well. Um, you know, a lot of coaches will always say we want our teams peaking at the end. You never want your team, you know, to peak early on. Right. So I think they'll be okay. They, he's that dominant, obviously back to back MVPs. But like I said, I, I think what they need to do to progress, is going to be on him and it's not, it's not, you know, passing the ball. It's not, rebounding he could do that he could get to the bucket he could dunk with one dribble at pass half court he's gonna have to knock down that jumper once he knocks down that jumper and they respect it LeBron had to do it you know what I mean like he, he's not the best shooter but he's pulling up from the logo now and he's shooting it with confidence he might not make it all the time but he's gonna shoot it and you have to respect it somehow now so um, but I think they'll be okay they, they did really good today Giannis you know and I think it's still they're still adapting you know what I mean it's 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 a tough situation obviously they get payments but we forget you know they're still humans at the end of the day so um I, I I disagree with you a little bit on the terms of the jump shot. Obviously, we all wish people could shoot better, but this is something me and Jay talk about all the time. Some people just have a natural um feel of dribbling the ball, and some people just have a natural feel of shooting the ball. And I just don't think he has that feel or touch of shooting the ball. So the question to you, B, is um is it does it have to be a jump shot? Or could he have came, come back this year with a post move, a drop step, uh, a jump hook, something other than catching the ball at the high post, facing up and running to the basket or catching the ball in transition, taking three dribbles with his right hand, Euro step. You know what I'm saying? Like, could it have been something else besides a jump shot that he could I, I agree. Yeah. I, I agree. I agree 100 percent with that. I, I think obviously as you get older, we all seen it with the greats. They have to develop something else. If it's mm -hmm. not the jumper, right? But I think he's so ball dominant heavy, and with Bledsoe not being there, obviously you got Drew Holiday there now, but he's so ball dominant heavy. It's like he's gonna have the ball on, on the wing, like yeah, he could go down to the post, but then that's gonna take the ball out of his hand. And I think too, I mean everybody knows once he gets that ball, that double team's coming. But I, but I agree with you. I, I mean I I think I think the jumper needs to be there just as a basketball player. We always tell our our kids growing up, you have to be able to hit at least a shot or two because that's the game at the end of the day. But I, I agree with that, but I, I just feel like right now in his career, he's gonna he's gonna need to be able 15 feet um, and stuff like that. So, but I agree with you. I think he needs a post move for sure. I think that would help. But you know that double team's coming, so you surround them with shooters regardless. Yeah, I only brought it up because it took LeBron about 16 years to get to that logo, man. So I don't I don't think the Bucks got 16 years, bro. That wasn't yeah. a, that wasn't I, a shot, pops. That was facts. I, I forgot. I want to mention this. <laughs> Can I say something real yeah, quick go ahead, about go ahead. Uh, Jared's point with the Mavs? Um, I don't know if you guys saw, J.J. Barea was on the podcast of uh, J.J. Reddick's, and he said he doesn't think um, he's mature enough yet to be that guy yet. So I, I want to hear it. your guys' thoughts on that, especially with Jay going. Ooh. Yeah, he says once he starts taking the game serious, he, he's going to be that dominant. Yeah. So do you think that has something to do with it? And he wasn't taking a shot at him. You know, that's his teammate. And he, he basically just said, like, he's that good, and we know he's that good. And even Mark Cuban, I've read some. He came out and said he came out of shape to camp. Like he was out of shape. Like he really wasn't in the best shape he could be in. 
but he's still getting his. Like, do you guys think, you know, you guys see it too, the maturity part of it? Um, I, I think the one thing about him that's different, well, it's similar to what we grew up playing. It was almost like when a guy like AI came in the league. I'm not comparing the skill set to AI. What I'm saying is when you give a team, when you give a guy a franchise right away, there's like a, a maturation process that needs to happen. Like the best thing for Kobe, though people hated on it, was the fact that he came in and he had three or four years to kind of settle in to become Kobe. Rather, if Kobe had went, you look at like a Lamar Odom too. Like guys like that, it's hard when you give them the keys right away. You know, and I think with Luka, he's that good, but – I think Dirk didn't stay long enough, so he has no vets with him that, like, Dirk was the franchise, where if Dirk had maybe stayed a year or two longer, even though Dirk wasn't playing, I think that's a guy that could have helped him understand the importance of all those things you're talking about, BG. But by the t- I think Dirk was there only his first year, I want to say, and then Dirk retired, and now he has nobody as a vet that I think he can look to that can hold him accountable to say, all right, man, we don't do this. Charles Barkley is automatically this... that guy right away. Real quick, yeah. Like Charles Barkley had a story, and I'll let y'all go. He talked about when he first came in the league, he had Moses Malone. He was like 40 or 50 pounds overweight, and he had Moses Malone there to keep him holding him accountable, keep him in shape, get him to lose weight. And that changed Charles Barkley's career. Mm-hmm. I think Luca's that is is way better in terms of just natural ability mm-hmm. already than any of them guys, but he doesn't have anybody there that I think that he that can help him get there or can get that maturation faster. He's gonna get there. I think it's gonna take a little bit longer. For sure. All right. I got a good one for That's you. That's what Pops. JJ said. Yeah, Brian. Got a good one for you, Pops. Uh, this team actually, I knew they were gonna be solid. But I watched a few of their games, man, and they look really good. And I still think uh, their best player doesn't get enough credit. I still think he's under the radar in terms of point guard. The Atlanta Hawks, man. Dre mm-hmm. Young and the Atlanta Hawks. Um, Pops, can you just talk about what you think uh, their first start has been? Obviously, just to reiterate, we know it's early. But uh, I haven't watched so much. Uh, I haven't watched this much Atlanta Hawks basketball in a long time. And Trey, Trey Young's a problem, man. That dude is a problem. Uh, for as young as he is, he sees about two, three plays ahead, got the handle, he can shoot it, the vision. Uh, he He's a problem. So uh, what you, would you think about that uh, roster and how it's constructed, Pops? I like the way the roster is constructed. It's constructed. I think you're dead on about Trey Young. What I like about Trey Young, and just what I did watch a few few minutes of it. What I liked about Trey, what I like about him, Trey Young can get you some buckets. <laughs> Trey Young can shoot deep. But I think the one thing that Trey Young is really going under the radar with is keeping the team involved. Mm-hmm. He moves that thing around with. Sometimes, man, he'll move that thing around to each player. Like him, I forgot the guy that, whoever the guy that rolls to, rolls to the basket. Collins. Yeah, Collins. Mm-hmm. This dude, I mean, he, he, he's, he's, make, he's make, they're both making each other look real good. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think a lot of it is, I think that's probably one of the reasons why Rondo went over there to even teach, to even show these dudes I think that's a big impact on how to be a point guard. But I think the ability, Trey Young wants it. And what I like about it, what I really like about it, people go like, oh, man, well, that goes back to college. I mean, I remember the things that, you know, what's the dude that always tripping people? Um, uh, Grayson Allen. Allen. Grayson Allen. Allen. Yeah. He's all, but Trey Young, like, I don't need y'all to, to back me up on this. I take the dude out myself. I'm tired of it. <laughs> but, He's showing one thing that Trey Young is showing that I really love, and I'm glad you his leadership. His leadership. I mean, first of all, everybody that plays on his team knows it's his team. <laughs> they know he's the box office dude. So 
And the way he getting that thing around, then he'll just start spreading that ball. Then next thing you know, he hitting you with a 40-footer, about three of them. <laughs> and, you, and the way he's coming off the pick and roll, no. Nah, I'm, uh, I'm, he's a wizard. I'm, I, but I, I like makes him so good right there. Yeah. I, 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 did, I did on – I like what I'm seeing. I like what I'm seeing. It may be a fluke, but I think it's early, but – Definitely headed in the right direction. I think Gallinari going there. I think that was good. I he mean, just got he hurt though. That go play that, six games, man. Yeah, he got hurt. <laughs> he got hurt. Yeah, he's out for a bit. You know, but he, he he's playing good, and I, the the coach over there. And then one thing that's good, and that we don't really, when you get a young coach that got young players, and they buy into what you bring in. That that's huge. That's huge. The coach is kind of no name. Really, everybody around there is kind of no name other than Trey Young. And them young dudes are buying in. And if you get them all to buy in, they're, they're buying in. So if Atlanta keeps making the right pieces and getting the right pieces around Trey Young, especially if you're going to keep him around with shooters, uh, I like it. I love it. Love it. Jay, can you touch up on that? Go ahead. I'm going to build on that before Craig goes. Two things that I think we got to add on and allude to that we talked about with the Nets. Nate McMillan, huge hire for them. You know, he's their assistant coach. You got a guy that coached in Where? Indiana, Nate McMillan. He's he's the assistant coach at Atlanta. They hired oh, Nate okay. McMillan. And Man. you got a guy like that who people don't really know in terms of championships, but he's a no-nonsense guy, old-school guy. Um, and I think bringing that guy to your culture, I think helped him as a, as a young coach. And then Rajon Rondo, we just talked about vets, man. Rajon Rondo is huge for that team because he knows his role. So he's going to go in there. There may be games he doesn't play that much. He's not even really there. He's there to, for playoff time if they make it, which they should. And he's there to, to, to help season Trey Young. We just talked about what uh, Luca needs, a guy that's wanted, a proven bet, that understands how to do it. And now you got Trey Young, whose talent is off the charts, like y'all said, with a vet and a great assistant coach with a great staff. And that, I they think that's, that's very that too. Man, he's they very underrated, he, BG. He's, yeah. he's won, he won a lot in the, in the Western Conference when Kobe and the Spurs were legit. Yeah, I, I don't think he got too far, but he – People who know basketball know he he gets it done. He demands that respect. I had no idea he was over there. That's crazy. He's just a coach, yeah. I had no idea. Go ahead, Craig. I was going to make a quick point. I think all the topics kind of tying together. You kind of uh, thinking about the the Nets, and you're talking about coaches and credibility, and 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 the the coaches that players respect. Um, I'm looking at, and we were talking about before the show how. You know how Nick Nurse out coached Brad Stevens, and I'm just real quick touching the Nets real quick. You know what's going to happen in the crunch time in the playoffs when you got three headed monster? You, how, how you gonna when you go up against a Nick Nurse, or or even my man at the Lakers? You know what I mean? What, what are you going? You know who's going to make that final call? And I think that's where I think they, they're going to compete, but I think that that's where it's going to become an issue when the game's on the line. But I'm not going to go into that again. But I'm just putting everything together. But one thing when you when you talking about Trey Young pops, I pulled up his stats. I didn't know this dude. He he, he put up twenty eight a yeah. game, and, and he's putting up yeah. eight assists. He, he balls. passing that thing. He's passing that. <laughs> and I look at his career. I mean, he went from nineteen to twenty nine to to, to twenty eight, but he's also playing like three less minutes a game. <laughs> so I guess he, as he's getting older, he's getting more efficient. You know what I mean? But I didn't I didn't know he was balling uh, like he, that. He, 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 he's 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 straight hooping. I like it. Then the piggyback. You know the one thing that I think you gave this team to, I think you gave it to BG. Uh, I think BG, you had the Bucks, right? Yeah. The one thing that concerns me about the Bucks, to be honest, uh, and the Drew Holiday is, is a good pickup for them. I don't think they really put the ball in his hand enough to be Drew Holiday. Thanks. But but uh, my problem with that team, it's really not even the roster. My problem with that team is the coach. It everything still looks the same. 
and everybody's going to wall up on Yannick. Uh, and mm -hmm. and, and, and it, it, it's nothing's looked different. I mean, you got a, 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 a guard who defends full court. You need to, if he's going, if anybody's going to initiate that offense, it needs to be Drew Holiday. Because right. everybody loading up on Yannick. They loading up on him. And you can kind of see, like, the Bucks still, you know, that's why they, they still blowing leads. And it's like, it's early, but it's like, come on, man. Because, I, you know, they might want to go like, oh, uh, well, we're going to give it him one more year. Yeah, you signed him, but Giannis going to be like, no, nah, man, y'all got to give me somebody to coach. Because he's going to get tired of seeing that wall. Yeah. And and to add on that, Pops, when you first, my bad, BG, when you first you said, go. The coach name, I was a little worried about where you were going, but uh I I, I agree with you. They they gotta get the ball. He shouldn't be initiating the, the offense in the half court, man. Like yeah. I, yeah. I, I would like to see him in some more pick and rolls, maybe. Um I hate when they ISO him on the wing and short corner and he shoots that fade. Like, what are we doing? <laughs> like that's not true, man. Hey, transition. <laughs> Semi transition final and that yeah. half court man. Let's 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 work through Drew. Pick a roll, pick a roll. Yeah. You and Giannis. Yeah, I don't want to see Giannis dribbling the ball in the half court like that. That's my point. That's exactly it, man. That, that's Go ahead, BG. It goes to your point how you wanted him in the post. You wanted him in the post a little bit more. But do you think that, him that rather that, that rather that than a jump shot, BG? I think that's yeah, more. But I'm saying that's but more. Do you, do you think him? You think him committing to them is like them like, all right, well, you committed to us. We're still going to run everything through you to keep them happy. Because imagine you you got Drew Holiday coming in. Is his ego that big where it's like, well, we just brought him in. Like, I just committed to you guys. I could have dipped and left somewhere else. Now everything's running through Drew a lot. Not everything, but like, you know, some of his touches are getting taken away. Do you think he has ego like that? But so that's I mean, why the, the ball's still in his hand. He he said he wanted to win. That's, that's what he said is about. Yeah. He said he ain't no MVP until he wins. Now we keep giving you the ball every possession um, in these same type of spots, and nothing's changing. Yeah. Like, what are we doing? But I don't think them running, like letting Drew Holiday handle the ball, necessarily means Giannis isn't gonna get those touches. Yeah. If Giannis is setting the screen and running to the basket, you gotta pay attention with, pay attention to him. You got Drew Holiday coming off the screen, crafty guard can handle it, can play make, can score yeah, on his shooters own. everywhere, and then shooters everywhere. Like I don't get why yeah. they keep giving him the ball at the high post. And then real like, quick, I, I wanted <laughs> so get it, man. I, wa I wanted to touch base on what Craig said about uh about the Nets, which is a really good point of like you know towards the end, like who's gonna, you know who's really gonna get down, like who's gonna run the play, whatever, who's gonna if there's gonna be beef there. And I always talk about it. I'm not comparing myself to Steve Nash as a coach at all, but. I've been in the bench with with Jared. I've been on the bench with you, with all you guys, basically. And you guys always tell me, like, don't overthink it. Because I always be, hey, what do you see? What do you see? And that's good sometimes. But at the end of the day, I think that instinct just kicks in. Once the game starts flowing, I think that's what's going to help Steve Nash in the end. Obviously, it's going to be different because he's not going to be the player. He's going to be the coach now. But I think him just seeing the game, filling out what's going to happen. And it's like, and I think like Craig's point, I think it's going to come down to if KD and Kyrie are going to accept it. If they accept it, they'll be fine. If they don't, but I don't think Steve Nash is going to be this year. Like you guys have said it earlier, I think it's going to be either if both of them are going to accept what he says. And I th think they are. I, th I think they've said the right things. I know you see it differently with, with, with them walking. I haven't seen that, but I think they've said all the right things. I, I even heard Kyrie in an interview say, I'm not, I'm not about anything else. I'm just trying to win. If, if they're really about that and they mean it, I think they'll be fine. The, the basketball instincts kicks in. But when, when you, when you have ego like that, and main reason he left Cleveland is he felt he didn't need LeBron, you know, I, I just think it's gonna come down to player player management, man. And yeah, we talked about it before um, on a previous show on the hire, and we talked about how they hired him for player management. Well, there's only one player right now that you got to worry about um, managing, and I I think that's I think that's Kyrie, man. I can, but if you if you saw what I was talking about, you might I like you might feel a little different. No, I, I like I get Kyrie you. too, but. No, As a point you. guard, like he's got the cold mentality. Like he's not a point guard that's six five, six four. He about he about six foot. Injury pro. Like, bro, okay. just kind of, and that's the thing, man. He's so good, bro. He's so crafty off the pick and roll, off the bounce. Like, he can be so good, like inefficient, but he wanna he wanna shoot step pulls from uh 35 feet. 
with a hand in his face. Like, did you have your hand raised, Craig? Yeah, I had a quick, quick point, like to piggyback what Brian was saying. It's like, I, I think obviously they're going to play well in the playoffs. Everybody's, you know, game steps up. But I could see Steve Nash call a play. Five seconds left, tied or down by one or two. And Kyrie says, hey, why don't we do this? You know what I'm saying? Or I don't want to run that. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, you need to have somebody that's going to make the call and nobody's going to argue. Now, that happened kind of with Phil Jackson. You know, when Shaq yeah. said, you know, I'm not going out or, or Mike said I'm not going out is one thing, but you still going to run the play that I, that I call. You know what I mean? So I think that – LeBron that did that to what's his name in the, so, against Chicago. Remember that? <laughs> they drew up – he was supposed to take the ball out. LeBron's like, nah. He's like, give me the ball. And he ended up making it. Yeah. So I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, you know, you know, worried about something like that happening when the game's on the line, when you really need that one person who has the respect to make the call. I, I, I understand confidence, man, but dudes, dudes got to humble themselves, man. Kyrie, you are great. You are great, but we, we're not. Let, let, let me, let I me, think they'll be fine, man. I really, I really think I, they're going to figure it out. I really do. I agree with everybody saying it is early, but if if I was John, you just said it. I think guys got to humble himself a little bit. Can you imagine on that team if Kyrie played fifty percent like a Steve Nash with the game he got? I mean, just fifty percent of I'm talking about getting the rock. Steve Nash, man, Steve Nash made the uh, start of my ox. Uh, not even, not even, not even a Steve Nash, bro. But just what I'm saying is thinking about getting other ball. people involved. <laughs> what I'm just, saying is okay, the ball. Okay, Mike D'Antoni is <laughs> over there, right? Everybody know what Mike D'Antoni. I'm saying the ball finds energy. Do that look like they running a Mike D'Antoni offense? No. Yeah, it does because Kyrie got energy, boy. <laughs> yeah, he's the only one. He don't, he's the only one. <laughs> You got, I mean, think about it. Look how, I mean, look what Mike D'Antoni did for James Harden game. Let's let's get facts and facts. James was not playing like that till 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 Mike D'Antoni created that monster. So he had ninety. He had the ball ninety eight percent of the time. But I mean, there were times where he get like thirty and fifteen. When are you gonna see Kyrie get thirty and fifteen? Maybe forty and five. <laughs> hey, seven turnovers. <laughs> Kyrie get a really get a real like point guard mentality because he has the size. That, the dude got handles. His handles is sick. Oh, yeah. But Kyrie, uh, you want to you want to pull step back threes over six eleven dudes. Oh yeah, I don't, think, I don't think that's fair though because we didn't ask AI to do that. You know what I'm saying? Like I think. Kyrie has Jay, 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 no, 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 is Kevin Durant on, was Kevin Durant on AIT, they had no one that could shoot the ball, he had to do that, but let me hear me out, hear me out, what I'm saying is, I think they thought this through a little bit, Um, I think Spencer did what he was that guy for them, because he would have been, the guy, I think, initiating some of that offense when Kyrie and Kevin were on the floor. And Spencer did really had – he has a high basketball IQ. So he would have been the guy that I think they would have used to initiate that offense. You can't make someone at that with that type of talent someone that they're not. You, you, you brought up Kobe Bryant earlier. Kobe Bryant was that guy, but Kobe Bryant wanted to win. So at the end of the day, yeah, he wanted to get 80, but Kobe wanted to win. I don't know. I don't know if Kyrie has the same desire to win as Kobe. He may have the same scoring mentality, but I still feel like Kobe wanted to win. Because at the end of the day, if Kyrie wanted to win, (laughs) I thought he had a better situation in Boston, to be real. But how much would he be sacrificing? Yeah. To win, because now with that group, you're still the guy, but you're not the like. You had Jay Tatum. You got other pieces that will still give you the ball, but we can win. But he didn't like that situation because when he got hurt, they looked better than they looked better without him. 
So then now you go and you say, oh, I'm going to get Kevin Durant. So because now if I get Kevin Durant, I could be the guy, but then I'm not the 1A, as y'all say, KD is. So if we lose, I'm not really getting that full blame as if if I'm with Boston and I'm in the face and we lose, it looks a little different. That's the only thing I'll be having issues with Kyrie about. I feel like if you want to be that guy, then put yourself in a position where they can build a team around you. You can't go and get arguably the best score in the world and not play the way you're supposed to play. So with that part of you, I agree. I just feel like it's going to be very hard for him to change that because in his mind, he feels like I'm Kyrie Irving. I've been this way. I'm not changing anything. I won a championship, so I'm not changing anything. We can agree. This, I feel like that's where he'd be at, though. But I think, I think that comes with time too. I feel like that that can change. I feel like that mentality, like I feel like it can. I mean, it's happened to some of the greats, but I think they go out and get a veteran though. Not that a veteran's gonna go in there and demand yeah. all the respect, but he's gonna be in there and kind of tell him like, "Yo, man, like," because obviously it's KD and Kyrie. Like, but I think they go out and get a veteran for that locker room presence. They got veterans two, over there. Two sensitive dudes too, man. Yeah, yeah. Who's the veteran there? Pop? Real sensitive dudes. Who's the veteran there? Over there. They don't have one. Who? Who? Oh, uh, yeah, Drake Jordan's over there. Oh, uh, no. No. What? He's a veteran. No. What? He, 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 he's not a, he's not you a don't veteran bring him leader. In. But that's yeah, the, you don't bring in it. What kind of veteran do they Pops. need? No. What? <laughs> like a Trevor Ariza. <laughs> like somebody. Like who? Not DeAndre. Like Trevor like, Ariza, somebody like that. I would even just say Trevor, man. But I mean, Trevor, he's a, Trevor. He, Trevor over DeAndre. Pop, you get me? Yeah, That's DeAndre. De- <laughs> no, no, not for not for game, Pop. But game, DeAndre not for still. Game. He he still yeah. solid. He's a, he's still a good center. He like, plays. Like, he plays twelve he, minutes a game. He ain't yeah. got no. He ain't got no leadership. <laughs> Wait, wait, wait. So, Pop, so, Pop, DeAndre Jordan, he's the leadership? Well, I, so, I mean, he's a bat. He should. It all uh, of, no, man. Here's that's, the problem. That's but, crazy. Uh, here's the problem. And now here's, here's the problem, really. Because Kyrie, well, let's not sugarcoat this. Kyrie got game. Kyrie got everything. Kyrie Irving will be the problem if they do not make it. Because here again, Kyrie left. He won out of Cleveland. And he didn't want his chip. I want out. Kyrie got shipped to Boston. Another solid team. Now he's in New York with another solid team. We can't keep giving him no passes. He can't get no passes. No one's giving him a pass, man. But, I mean, when you say, y'all don't say Trevor Reason? Now, y'all, Trevor over, Reason. over DeAndre Jordan? <laughs> what is Pop? Pop, what is, what is, what is DeAndre Jordan? No what has DeAndre Jordan been a part of? A Hold on, Pete. What is, no. what, no. what, what has DeAndre Jordan been a part of, Pops? Nothing. Lob what City. has he been a part of? He was a part of your team, Lob City. No, that wasn't my Ooh. team. I was a Laker during that time. Oh, shame. You should have stayed. was here. Cole was here. Don't do that. I'll say this, man. Me. I'm, I'm, I'm on the net. DeAndre band, Jordan. I think they'll be fine. The Nets are going to be fine. Oh, hey. I'm on the I'm on the bandwagon. Hey, I gotta ask y'all this though. I gotta ask y'all this because I, I I knew John was gonna ask. I'm, I gotta ask y'all this. We talking about cast hooping though, but y'all ain't said nothing about Colin Sexton though. Out here, mm. out here. Yeah. Mm. Colin they're, Sexton, they're hey, five and two. He averaging twenty six right now. Five and, and two. They, they four and three. Well, oh, they lost they tonight. Right? Oh, they yeah, they lost tonight. tonight. Yeah, we ain't talking about Colin Sexton though. Who, who's, the, who's the other guard that played with him? Ah, uh, they Garland. back. Oh, uh, Darius uh, Garland, Garland or something. They got Garland yeah. O'Cara, O'Cara. They yeah. they backcourt now. Jay Wright. They backcourt. They here again. You got a bunch of young dudes with with Paul Silas Jr. Young coach that they ain't got nothing to lose but to buy into the system. And them two dudes, like you said, Colin Sexton is hand folk up right now. Hey, mm-hmm. hey, if we if we gonna talk about if we gonna talk about Cleveland, we got we gotta bring up the Knicks. 
Got to bring up the Knicks. We can bring up the Julius, Knicks. Your boy huh? Julius Randle balling. Julius Randle is hooping. He's but, hooping. He's like 25, 10, said. and 6 right now. He killing. It goes back to what we've been saying. We all agree on, though. Good coaching and vets. Cleveland got Kevin Love, great vet. They need the and they, got, and they got they got JaVale McGee. So you got two <laughs> dudes who they know their roles – Wait, and they're no. helping the young dudes. Hold oh. on, hold on, Pop. Hold on. And then you go to New York. Champion, you, got New York you got New York Knicks. Same thing. You got Thibodeau. So it's just the structure's different. Good coaching and vets, man. Yeah. That's been the consistency of what we've been talking about. You talk about Brooklyn right now. They got two of the best players in the world. But they, they got DeAndre Jordan. Which is not a great bet. <laughs> they got that bet. They got, they they got, got that bet. And, no, and no leadership. No, no leadership. Uh, <laughs> no leadership. You mean to tell me y'all gonna? I say DeAndre Jordan. He gonna say something reckless. Kevin Love. Oh no, y'all gonna Kevin let Love. Kevin Love and Jabell McGee. Can I? Can I? Can I respond to that, John? Please. What do they have that DeAndre doesn't have, Bob? Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. All right, so can I, I'll respond to that, Pops. Craig, I need your backup right now, Craig, because Pops is killing me tonight. Look, JaVale he's McGee, tonight. He's tonight. look, <laughs> he's been – he's playing – his last two franchises have been champions. He went to the Warriors when he was on his way out the league. Hear me out. And he learned about their culture and about being a team and about winning and about being a pro. JaVel McGee was real immature before he got to go to the state. Then he goes to the Lakers. He does it again. He plays with LeBron James. He understands the, 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 the team, the leadership. He goes to Cleveland. He don't even start. <laughs> and that dude, man, I've watched two of their games. His energy is amazing. He, he's he's high-fiving guys. He's talking to the young guys. He's getting guys pumped up. Yo, when you're in a league full of young dudes trying to find their way, you need that. And then J.B. Bickerstaff, the coach, he's a good coach. J.B. Bickerstaff is a really, really good coach. So you got – we ain't talking about who's better. You know we know DeAndre better, Jordan's a better player than JaVale McGee. <laughs> if we talking about – if we talking about Vets, Kevin Love is a champion. That's what but I'm Kevin saying. Love, Kevin Love is taking a back seat. So Colin Sexton, think about this. I saw I saw Demarcus Cousins on the bench hot tonight. Demarcus Cousins out. hot because he ain't playing in the game. He ain't, he's ain't finna go nowhere. You know why? Because wait, wait, wait. you got guys Pops. like that. Pops, I need I need to you need to explain to us what you mean by Draymond by uh, DeAndre God, Jordan. I got to hear this one. What I'm saying is, I'm, he's not a champion, but he's been in long enough. To know what leadership is. How? Oh. They don't win, Pop. He's never been a part in winning. He played with Chris Paul. If you <laughs> listen, if you listen, if you play with Chris Paul, you ain't you ain't that's the leader, Jack. I'm telling yeah, right now. If Chris Paul on your team, suit. you just better roll that bass and catch this ball. Because you ain't saying <laughs> nothing to them others. That's Chris Paul. For whatever reason. I don't okay. You make it. I mean, I, everybody I, was looking. That was, was just hey, that was reckless too. But that was better than that was better was, than DeAndre Jordan. It was it was a name that was thrown out there a lot last year. That's what I'm saying. Okay, when it comes to veteran leadership, right? DeAndre now, Jordan. No, the best person for veteran leadership right now in the league. Is Andre Eagle Dollar? Who else? Oh is man, he's not. Andre. I'm hey, done. hey, I'm... Well, no, 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 Pop, no, Pop. We, yeah, I'm we done. take no. no. I'm, done. I'm done. No, we taking I'm done. that. We, we gonna, I'm done. Gatorade. We you gonna swap. Me. We gonna swap DeAndre Jordan for Andre Iguodala. We taking that, Jake. We taking that. We'll take that. I was gonna throw another good one out there. You're going to take Andre Iguodala over Kevin Love and, and JaVale McGee? You were just hyped about him last year de when they de won, de Pops. De Definitely JaVale. Definitely JaVale. I, I agree with possibly. you, Pop. 
I agree with you. I agree with you. I don't know what Jay talking about. But Jay got me hot right now. Well, you got to say something after you going to bring up DeAndre Jordan? Well, you bring up JaVale McGee? Hey, I'm going to bring up... four and three. I'm going to bring up J.J. Reddy. Oh, yeah, he's good. J.J. Reddy. J.J. Reddy is good. J.J. Reddy is a good one, too. Greg, where you at, man? Because these dudes tripping tonight. What about, like, what about, like, Millsack? <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Come on. Bro, why is he getting up when this dude said DeAndre, DeAndre Jordan? Jordan? DeAndre hey, hey, Jordan. Hey, 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 that, that Y'all don't like Millsap? I agree with him. I, Millsap cool. No, I'm just saying. I think you're listening. I mean, I, I it ain't been a reason. No, <laughs> Trevor reason and, and, and DeAndre Jordan, man. That was pretty bad, yeah. <laughs> Hey, that's up there with Delva Delva, man. You man, I'm it? taking Trevor Reed. <laughs> Mamba Disciple right there. That's a Mamba Disciple right there. A Mamba Disciple. Trevor? All right, man. Mamba Disciple. Who? And he's from L.A. He don't play that. Who? I'm taking Trevor Reed. Trevor Reed. Where he at right now? He know. got <laughs> Yeah, he got somewhere. He, he about to leave, bro. He about yeah. to leave. I'll still take him. <laughs> He's take not him over right the, the great DeAndre Jordan. I'll tell you that. I would too. He's in the league. Oh well. He yeah, is. plays twelve minutes. He well, could pay me to play twelve minutes. Yeah. All right. Um, I, all mill set was solid. That was a good. Oh right, man, y'all. Look. What am I doing? All right, man. We're gonna we're gonna wrap this one up. Or any more reckless statements come out. Um, yeah, that was that was a good one, man. Um, we kind of just wanted to touch base um, of all the teams right now. Um, obviously, we, everyone's excited that the basketball world's back. So I'm I'm happy for those teams that even though it's early, teams that are overachieving. Some of those teams that are four and three will usually be one and six right now, man. So um, it just looks different. And I think a lot of it has to do with um, there's no fans. Uh, the NBA is different right now. So kind of comes off with uh, – comes down to that energy. Dude's just out there hooping and not having nothing to lose. So I think that – and the pressure of fans not being there, it kind of just helped teams kind of play better, man. So um, let us know down in the comments who's your biggest surprise. Uh, who's your biggest team that you think is going to flop 20 games in? But uh, thanks for watching. This is Agree to Disagree. Got my boy Jay Lloyd, Craig Williams, Fox. We got BG. And I'm done, man. Until next time. Yeah.